Hello, Tipsy. Um, Brad Lotsky, I'm here to talk to you a little bit about hacking the interview process. So blame everything you're about to hear on me. This doesn't represent my employer. This is all about my experiences interviewing and being an interviewer. Dave did a 50-minute talk on the entire hiring process. If you didn't see it, I highly recommend that you and anyone that's involved in hiring in your company uh, actually watch that video. It was fantastic. Different backgrounds, different perspectives, and different experiences help the process. You'll get more well-rounded hires able to work in a diverse environment. Ensure your hiring team reflects the diversity you want to see in the company. We're generally not good at soft skills. Without training to understand how to communicate effectively, you'll miss out on great candidates. There may be legal issues as well. You need to be aware of federal, state, and local employment laws as they pertain to interviewing and discrimination. If you're really not comfortable with interviewing, step aside. You will put off candidates. If you haven't had the training, talk to HR about getting it before you proceed. Read the job description. You may disagree with what that job description says. That's fine, but that's what the company has said they want to hire for. This will ensure you're asking the right questions and you stay on track in the interview. Read the candidate's resume. Read the candidate's resume. <laughs> Figure out which experiences best reflect the requirements of the job description that you just read. Seriously, don't Google stalk them. Twitter and Facebook have made this a dangerous game you may end up tripping into protected information on the candidate. If you do, you have to remove yourself from the interviewing process. If you don't know what protected information is, you haven't received the proper training on interviewing. Talk to your fellow interviewers. Talk about the issues you have with the job requirements, possible issues you have with the candidate's qualifications based on any pre-screening that has occurred so far. You want to save time as early in the process as possible. Formulate a plan. Who interviews with who? What topics will be covered? which questions will be asked. Pair up. Don't overwhelm the candidate with six people on the table. It's not fair to either side of the table because you need to give everyone the opportunity to contribute. If you want six people to talk to the candidate, maybe three 30-minute interview sessions are better than um, three 30-minute interview sessions with two people are better than one interview session that's one hour and a half long with six people in the room. Make sure if you do pair up, that you pair up with someone that you work well with you want to show a good working relationship. <laughs> be humble, be kind, be generous. You are the first real exposure to the company and possibly your team that this candidate has. Don't forget that the candidate is going to have to want to work with you and your team if you choose to accept them. Make the candidate comfortable. It's your responsibility to foster an environment where the candidate can be the best version of themselves. Don't ask a single question that has a right answer. Trust me, you don't care if the candidate memorized a man page or knows why a manhole cover is round. Work with the candidate through the interview process. Find out what it's like to collaborate, not confront them. Your process isn't perfect. Perform interview postmortems after every interview with everyone involved in the process. HR, phone screens, everyone in the face-to-face. -face. What worked, what didn't? How can you improve it? The better you filter earlier in the process, the happier you're going to be with interviewing. So that's the talk. This is a start, step one. Um, as a lightning advertisement, I'd just like to uh, say, um, if you haven't ever submitted a talk for a conference, that this is probably one of the most welcoming and accepting audiences that you'll ever come across. There are tons of resources available to you if you're interested in doing that. I know you can talk to myself. Uh, John Anderson, um, who's Gene Hack, where is he? I saw him just a second ago over there. Um, and Vicki Bressor um, will actually coach you through how to submit a, a proposal and help you practice and all of this stuff. So if, you're in, if you um, learn something at this conference, um, please submit next year. I want to learn something from you. Part two. So let's switch sides of the table now. Um, as an interviewee, what, what, what can you do to better uh, yourself? Well, first off, this is all my fault. Don't blame anyone else. No one else has any say in this but me. The application process is unique to the employer. Read it, follow it, or I'm discarding your CV. They want a .docx? Swallow your pride and do it if that's a company you want to work for. 
Don't lie on your CV, but make sure the first page really demonstrates that you satisfy the job requirements. Did you link to Facebook or Twitter on your CV? Unless you worked for either of those companies, you probably don't want to do that. Write a cover letter, even if you can't submit it. Why you're a good fit, why you're interested in joining this company. Great, you landed the interview. Reread the job description. You should have read it before, but read the job description. Research the company some more. Relate your passion to the company's mission. Understand why you want to work there. What I do is keep an Evernote of all the positions that I apply for with the full job posting as it originally appeared, the CV I originally submitted, all of the research that I've done on the company, and I update it after every step in the interview process with notes that I've had for feedback on the process. Again, we're classically bad at soft skills or whatever, so remember a few things. Plan on being early. Delays happen, plan for them. If you get there super early, grab a snack or a coffee nearby. Get into the office 10 to 15 minutes before the interview is acceptable any more than that, and you're kind of inconveniencing the whole entire team. You guys are awesome, so just be yourself. I want to hire you. I don't want to hire the version of you you think I want to hire. Again, be humble, be kind, be generous. Um, if you're really into stupid social hacks, if you're offered a drink of water, a drink of coffee, a drink of tea, accept that offer. It builds a bridge. Stay on topic and answer honestly. Ask for feedback after you answer a question, saying something like, do you need more details about something I just mentioned? Might be the difference between you getting the job and not. Be comfortable saying I don't know but follow it up with a relation to something that you do know and how you would find out more. Don't say I'd Google it and then stop talking, because great, so can I. I want to know how your, pro your thought process works. I'd Google it as a fine answer, but make sure it's I'd Google it and here's what I'd Google and here's what i do when I find this. It's a perfectly acceptable way of working. Always ask questions. This is your hedge against bad interviewers. There are a lot of bad interviewers. The only way that you'll get a job if there's a bad interviewer is if you ask, that, ask questions. Um, ensure they understood all of the explanations that you've given. Was there an area that they thought you were weak in that you actually have a lot of technical experience but you've held back because you don't want to overwhelm them? Ask, do you need more details? Always have questions ready for anyone who asks for a question. If I'm an interviewer and I'm asking you, do you have any questions for me? Yes, I do. Because if you say no, great, I'm not going to hire you. Asking questions about interviewers' personal experiences is a great way to be able to have one or two questions ready to go at any point in time and then just simply re-ask that same question to each person. Some examples are, what do you like about working here? If you could change one thing about your team, about your company, about your culture, what would it be? Those answers are going to be different from every single person and they're going to be incredibly valuable to you in determining whether it's a good fit for you. Take notes early and often. Uh, if you're hired, you may be able to help make the process a lot better. And if you apply for a position with the company again in the future, and like me, you completely forget that you interviewed with that company, um, you'll have some notes available to you to understand why it didn't work out the first time. And that may save you a lot of time. Um, what's interesting, uh, what I like to do is, is capture job descriptions as they appear. That's interesting because you can see how job descriptions evolve over time and see if a company is moving towards or away from the version that you would like to be. And above all else, try to have fun. Interviewing is stressful. Uh, I always think about how lucky I am to meet so many people in the interview process. On either side of the table, uh, you can have fun in, in the process. You can improve uh, things and make it a great place to work. That's it. Thanks. Thank you.